Oh, Canada, our neighbors to the north and east if you're in Alaska, true hockey fan. Okay, that's enough of that. Today we rank the Canadian provinces. In case you don't know, Canada is the second largest country on the planet, right behind Russia, and it has 10 provinces along with three sparsely populated territories. And I mean sparsely populated, like some have three times as many moose as they have people with more than four teeth. In this video, we rank the Canadian provinces based on a survey we did to which 3,200 Canadians responded. We'll also include some pros and cons from each. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Ontario. Ontario is Canada's most populous province and is home to major cities such as Toronto and Ottawa. Its most southern city is Windsor, which is right across the Detroit River from the city of Detroit, Michigan. Sorry about that, Canada. On the northern end of the province, you'll find the Hudson Bay and the small town of Fort Stevens. Ontario is known for its diverse economy, including strong sectors in manufacturing, finance, and technology. The population of Ontario is about 14 million. I don't know how many that is in Canadian. The good things about Ontario are a strong economy, excellent education system, diverse cultural scene, vibrant cities, and stunning natural scenery. They got a lot of open land, a lot of open, beautiful land, I should say. Now, the negatives are a high cost of living. They got serious traffic problems in their cities, especially Toronto. They are rising housing costs in some areas, again, especially in Toronto. And they have environmental concerns related to pollution and climate change. Change. I probably should mention Ontario's home to Ottawa, which is Canada's capital city. Ontario got 189 votes. Number nine, Quebec. Quebec is the largest province in Canada by land. It is known for its rich culture and history, including its unique French language and traditions. They really put the French on thick here. Their two biggest cities are Montreal and Quebec City on the southern end of the province near Maine and Vermont. Quebec City is right up the St. Lawrence River from Montreal. I will actually be taking a cruise out of New York City in 2024, September of 2024, that goes from New York, Boston, Portland, Maine, and then a few other places, and they finally drop you off at Quebec City. Gotta actually sail down the St. Lawrence River for a while. Should be a good time. I was in Quebec City years ago, and hands down, this city has some of the best architecture I've ever seen. If I had my choice, I could only go to one, Montreal. Montreal or Quebec City, I would go to Quebec City. Just walk around and take pictures. It's amazing. One thing I love about Canada is the fact that their cities really only take up about 5%, maybe, of a province. It's just open land. Quebec is the smaller of the two big cities here in Quebec, with the city of Quebec City having a population of about 550,000, their entire metro area having about 840,000. Montreal, on the other hand, is a big city. The city itself has 1.7 million residents with the entire metro area having a little over 4 million. So good sized cities. Everything else has less than 5,000 people. And there's only a couple that have 2,000 or more. The entire province of Quebec has 8.5 million residents. Now here's the good and the bad about Quebec. The good is it's got a rich culture and heritage, excellent food, stunning architecture, dynamic cities, and a thriving tech industry. They got a pretty good tech industry there, especially in Montreal. Now here's the downside. They got really high taxes here, contentious language politics, occasional political instability, and harsh winters. That's sort of a thing theme in most of the Canadian provinces as harsh winters. Quebec got 197 votes. Number eight, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is located in the western part of Canada and is known for its vast prairies and agricultural industries. They're also really big in resource extraction like gas, oil, and potash. Potash is a fertilizer that contains potassium. There's more that goes into that, but I'm not Mr. Wizard, so I'm not going to get into it. If you go to Saskatchewan, you'll find some interesting places like Regina, Moose Jaw, and Saskatoon. Saskatchewan is right in the middle of Canada. It is above North North Dakota and Montana. Saskatchewan is really a rural place. The pros of Saskatchewan are rich natural resources, a strong agricultural industry, like I said, very friendly people, and it's affordable. It's got a really low cost of living compared to the rest of Canada. Obviously, that's going to change a bit if you move into one of the big cities like Saskatoon. Now the cons. Harsh winters, limited job opportunities, and occasional droughts and wildfires. 
Saskatchewan got 224 votes. Number seven, Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island is up there by Maine if you're in the United States and looking for it. One time I had a discussion with a guy and he swore it was near Vancouver. And I promised him it was on the other side of the country. Finally got down to what he was thinking and he was actually thinking of Vancouver Island, which is right over there by Vancouver, BC. In case the name Vancouver Island didn't tip you off. But Prince Edward Island is a small province. It's located on the eastern coast of Canada and is known for its beautiful beaches and rural charm. It is the smallest province in terms of both land area and population, and its economy is primarily based on agriculture and tourism. A lot of cruise ships head here. For the longest time, I thought it was part of Nova Scotia. Took a geography class in college and they said, no, it's actually its own province. The pros for Prince Edward Island would be beautiful beaches, very laid back lifestyle. It's a slow paced thing, vibrant music and art scene, tons of seafood and a very low crime rate. Now the negatives or the cons. It has a high cost of living, limited job opportunities, reliance on seasonal industries like tourism, you know, like I said, the cruise ships coming through there, and agriculture. It is pretty far north, so it does get some pretty harsh winters. This is definitely not that tropical island you dream about, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Prince Edward Island got 231 votes. Number six, Manitoba. If you're looking for Manitoba on a map, it is right above Minnesota, North Dakota, sandwiched in between Ontario and Saskatchewan. The big city here would be Winnipeg. They have a few very small cities and the rest are just small towns. Like most of the provinces in Canada, this one's pretty big. It's actually 250,000 square miles. And the capital of Manitoba is Winnipeg. They have 1.4 million residents. Manitoba is really known for its natural beauty and outdoor recreation opportunities. The economy here is very diverse with major sectors including agriculture, manufacturing, and a lot of mining here. If you like to fish, this is a good place for that. The pros for Manitoba would be abundant wildlife, amazing natural beauty, affordable cost of living, friendly people, and a diverse economy. The cons? would be severe weather conditions, a lot of snow shoveling, a lot of scraping ice off your windshield, limited jobs outside of Winnipeg, and they get some flooding here. Manitoba got 249 votes. Number five, British Columbia. British Columbia is located on the west coast of Canada and it is known for its natural beauty, including its rugged coastline. And it's got, it is surrounded by mountains. The province economy is diverse with major sectors, including forestry, mining, and technology. They got a serious technology scene in Vancouver. They also got a serious homeless population in Vancouver too. I was just there in October and it was a little alarming, but Vancouver isn't the entire province. Out on Vancouver Island, they have Victoria up near the Alaskan border on the coast. They have Prince Rupert and a whole bunch of little towns. In my opinion, British Columbia is the most beautiful one. I mean, they got the killer coastline. They got mountains, just a rugged landscape right outside of Vancouver. But their pros are, like I said, natural beauty, amazing, thriving cities, thriving tech industries, diverse cultural scene. Here's the negatives. So not many people live outside of Vancouver or Victoria. So this kind of just reflects on those two places. They've got a very high cost of living, horrible traffic, occasionally natural disaster like wildfires, landslides, and extremely expensive real estate. I was looking at real estate in Vancouver, and even once you, you know, translate it from Canadian to American dollars, it was crazy expensive. So currently, a million dollars Canadian is like 728,000 in United States dollars. They have homes in Vancouver going for like a million US dollars that I wouldn't even pay 350,000 for here in Portland, Oregon. Even the suburbs like Surrey were ridiculous. So that's a serious negative for British Columbia is the cost of real estate. But like I said, it's a beautiful province and I almost called it a state. And when some place is beautiful and near the ocean, it's expensive. British Columbia got 296 votes. I think that's wrong. Should have got a lot more. Number four, Newfoundland and Labrador. Now this is the newest province. I should say it's sort of new. There was Newfoundland, that was a province, and then in 2001, they added Labrador to it. So it became the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. This province has one of the most unique cities in North America. It's called St. John's. And for some reason, these people 
went ham and cheese with the pastel paints. It's almost like neighbors started trying to outdo themselves on who could have the most colorful home. And it's not like they're all doing pinks. This year it's all pinks. No, one might be bright green, one might be bright blue, another one's yellow, another one's red. It's very unique. If you ever do visit St. John's, make sure you go to George Street. George Street has the highest concentration of bars and pubs in North America. But Newfoundland and Labrador is located on the eastern coast of Canada. Newfoundland and Labrador is known for its stunning natural beauty and friendly people. The province has a rich history with a strong emphasis on fishing and the sea. However, it does also face some challenges related to a declining population and the age of the workforce. More people are retiring than being hired on. But its pros are, like I said, stunning natural beauty, unique cultural heritage, friendly people, rich history, abundant seafood, and excellent hiking trails. The cons, it's got a high cost of living. It's sort of to be expected, kind of like Alaska. Alaska is so far away from everything. Well, this province is also kind of far away from everything, especially like St. John's is their biggest city. And that's the most Eastern city in North America. I really like the fact that St. John's isn't too far away from a place called Black Tickle, where Black Tickle actually has their own airport, the Black Tickle Airport. How do you get a name like Black Tickle? Now, when you look at their cons, they've got a high cost of living, declining population, like I'd said, limited job opportunities, and harsh weather conditions in the winter. This place gets some pretty rough winters. Most of Canada has the potential for that, but some of them are a little more than others. Newfoundland and Labrador got 353 votes. I don't get that one at all. Number three, New Brunswick. New Brunswick is located on the east coast of Canada and is known for its natural beauty and outdoor recreation opportunities, like a lot of these places. Canadians like to get outside and they like to do things once they're out there, no matter what the weather is. In Oregon, there's a saying, if you waited for better weather, you'd never leave the house. My other favorite one that I heard when I first moved up here was, we don't cry when it rains on our parade, we expect it to rain on our parade. That's how Canadians are. Soccer and hockey are a perfect example. It's like they were playing soccer one year and then it got too cold and they thought you know what the field's all frozen and covered with snow what do we do now they're all hey look the pond is frozen why don't we play on there of course the ice is slippery so we'll need to put blades on our feet give each other sticks and then we'll fist fight whenever we disagree with each other and front teeth are optional i'm really not sure how they invented hockey but i mean that story's as good as any other new brunswick is a really laid back province it's a nice place to retire it's a nice place to relax they don't have any giant cities their major industries are forestry, manufacturing, and tourism. The pros of New Brunswick is friendly people, affordable cost of living, beautiful scenery, diverse wildlife, and numerous outdoor recreational opportunities. The cons, it's got limited job opportunities. They don't have a lot of different industries here, so make sure you know before you go if you're going to move there. They don't pay the best in this one. They actually have pretty low wages compared to the other provinces, and they get a lot of natural disasters, floodings, ice storms, things like that. New Brunswick got 387 votes. Number two, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is on the eastern coast of Canada. It is known for its scenic beauty, including its world famous Cabot Trail. Nova Scotia is big in fishing, agriculture, forestry, and manufacturing. Nova Scotia is almost an island. It has a little patch of land that connects it to New Brunswick. Nova Scotia is Latin for New Scotland. Most of the population are native English speakers and the province population is just under a million residents. Here's an interesting little fact about Nova Scotia. Denonyms. Denonyms are what the people call themselves. Oregonians, Californians, New Yorkers, Floridians, Canadians. Well, in Nova Scotia, you can be a Nova Scotian, but they also use the word blue noser. And that's not something that's new. That's been around since about 1785. The pros for Nova Scotia are the coastline. It's beautiful, excellent seafood, strong arts and cultural scene, world-class universities, and a thriving economy. The downside, high taxes, limited job opportunities in certain areas, high rate of poverty, and occasional severe weather events. Nova Scotia got 514 votes. All right, before we get to number one, if you want to help out this channel, at the end of this video, they offer you some other things to watch from this channel. If you clicked on one of those, it really helps out the channel. It's something YouTube's really focusing on right now. So if you got time, watch another World According to Briggs video. All right, on to number one. 
And number one, Alberta. Yeah, this one surprised me. I wouldn't have picked Alberta as number one, but it got the most votes. Alberta is located in Western Canada, and it's known for having a very strong economy, which includes major sectors in oil and gas, agriculture, and technology. The province is also home to the Rocky Mountains, at least part of them. Yes, the Rocky Mountains are not exclusive to the United States. They've been big in energy and oil production forever here. Edmonton Oilers is their hockey team. They also have the Calgary Flames, which is my favorite hockey team. Now, the pros for Alberta are this. They have a strong economy, high standard of living, abundant natural resources, and the amazing natural scenery that I was talking about. Their cons, they have a heavy reliance on the oil and gas industry, occasional wildfires, rising housing costs in some areas, and environmental concerns related to resource extraction. They get some pretty bad air quality here occasionally. But Alberta is a beautiful place to live. When you live in an area with the rock it can't be completely bad, right? I should have mentioned this earlier, but the mountains that they have in British Columbia, well, that's the Rockies also. Alberta got 561 votes. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.